When children are competent, they are ready to accept challenges, try new things, and find solutions to problems. These skills don't come easily. How can you support a child who frequently comes up against the same problem over and over? It might be something like playing video games too much, forgetting homework, or fighting with their siblings. These frequent recurring problems can cause fights between you and your child and make both of you feel like you're stuck in an endless loop. It can be easy then to start blaming the child for not getting it together. This doesn't build confidence. In this video, I'll be talking about ways that you can overcome these types of deadlocks by partnering with your child. When you work together to find a solution, your child will gain confidence and resilience. Here's a scenario that is a common source of contention between parents and their children. You may have a child who really likes to play video games. It seems like they are constantly on the game. You set limits, but every day they go over their screen time, and it creates this back and forth battle. You feel like you've tried everything, like counting down, using a timer, or grounding. You and your child are frustrated and on edge. When you have to get on your child's case for the same problems over and over again, you might be stuck in a deadlock. Imagine that two people are facing each other and you draw a line in the sand. You're on that side and I'm on this side. There's no collaboration, just you need to do this. That's a deadlock. But what if you take the line out of the sand and you step over to the other side with your child and say, hey, I'd really like to help you with this. Now you and your child are on the same team. This is how partnering can help you overcome a deadlock. Partnering focuses on maintaining a strong relationship with your child and working together to find a solution that works for both of you. As the parent, you might need to step back, dig a little deeper, and change your frame of mind. Here are some things you could consider as you reflect on the situation at hand. First, ask yourself, what have I already done? Have you really done everything? It's pretty unlikely. What would happen if you tried making a list? In the past, you've tried to enforce screen time by counting down, using a timer, or grounding. Often a parent will try one or two things and then they jump to the conclusion, I've done everything and nothing is working. That's all or nothing thinking. This kind of unhelpful thought creates a lot of frustration. On the other hand, when a parent steps back and says, let me make a list of everything I've done and make sure that I haven't missed something that could work, then all of a sudden we're having a more productive perspective on how to address this issue with our child. Believe in your ingenuity and get creative. The more you tell yourself it's an unsolvable problem, the harder it will be to solve. Changing your beliefs can change your reality. Next, ask yourself, what have I actually followed through on 100%? If nothing seems to be working, it might be because you've been inconsistent in your approach. It's helpful when both parents are on the same page. Don't get stuck in a fix it mentality. Remember that all children want to thrive, but they'll need support as they practice a new skill, like time management or self-control. These are some of the skills a child needs to regulate their own screen time. If you've ever tried to lose weight, you already know that consistency and a supportive environment are key to changing behavior. The best support that parents can provide considers a child's need for safety, connection, and competence. One way that you can build support is by identifying your child's motivation. You may think that the root of the problem is your child's lack of motivation or laziness, but usually the problem isn't that they aren't motivated, rather they are motivated to meet a different need than the skill we are trying to get them to develop. Rewards and consequences are one way to provide external support. However, they are most effective as part of a collaborative plan developed with a child to improve a skill. In a collaborative plan, the child feels safe, has a good connection with the parent, and gives input towards the external rewards or motivators that will aid him in practicing a new discrete skill. Ask your child, how will turning off your video games benefit you? What's something that would make this change worth it to you? Maybe we could work out an agreement. This is a beautiful conversation to have. As a general rule, nobody responds to fear as well as they do to their own internal motivation. So how do you help encourage your child's internal motivation? You can track behavior and progress. It's really just as simple as making a chart on some paper and putting it somewhere your child can see it. By tracking the behavior, it's no longer a guessing game. Your child can't argue that they actually did remember to turn off the game last week, and you can't argue that they never turn it off. 
Keeping a record in a visible place gives you data to look at. You can see the time allotted and the time spent. It gets rid of one piece of the deadlock. It's especially important for a child to see their progress if they are really earnest. Seeing improvement will build confidence and encourage them to keep practicing. Finally, be consistent. Remember that it can take a good three to four weeks for behavior to change. We move in such a fast-paced world that when one thing doesn't work, or even if two things, and whoa, if you really stretch it and you try a third thing, and a month goes by and it hasn't worked, and another month goes by and it hasn't worked, we really feel like we're in a hardship. But the reality is behavior sometimes can take many days and many months to change the direction of the train, so to speak, especially if you've been caught in a deadlock for a while. Let go of your expectation that a skill needs to be mastered in a week or even in a month. Give yourself and your child some grace as you figure out what helps. If you've tried some of these approaches and are still facing a deadlock, here's a couple of more things to think about. Understand development to set appropriate expectations. The most successful parents are aware of what kind of decisions their child can make developmentally. Sometimes parents err in creating expectations that are impossible for the child to live up to. If you aren't sure what is developmentally appropriate, talk to people who know that age group. Teachers have such a wealth of knowledge. Ask them what's normal and expected and possible. For example, by the time a child is a teen or preteen, they should be able to adhere to a time limit imposed by a parent or finish their homework before they play but they may need to be taught how to wrap up a game so they can end on time. Games are engineered to promote continual play. A teen or preteen may have difficulty walking away from the game when their time is up. Parents can help by pointing out a good stopping point. Teens may need help learning that sometimes it's actually easier to walk away from the game when they finish a level than when they've waited until the last minute of screen time. Knowing that teens are still developing self-regulation and that apps are designed to keep their attention can help parents set appropriate expectations for technology use. You can also try a neutral approach. An accusative tone will immediately put teens on the defensive. Wait until you aren't in an elevated state to bring up an issue. Keep questions curious and not pointed towards a goal. If things stay open-ended, your child will feel more safe to share and collaborate. Instead of, how long have you been on your game? Try coming home from work, sitting down next to your child, and asking calmly, how has playing been today? Did you make it to the next level? And then hold your child accountable to the screen time rules. This approach will help your teen know that you care about them even more than you care about the problem at hand. Throughout this process, remember to get your child's input. The problem is only going to get solved by your child, so help them be a part of the solution. This is what it means to partner. Encourage them to voice their opinions on the subject even if they contradict your own. Connecting with your child and maintaining a good relationship is also really important. Make time to have fun together by playing basketball or going to a movie. Don't let the problem become the focus of your relationship. I want to finish by sharing an example of partnering that I saw in my own life. My younger sister really struggled with her grades in high school and she had a hard time getting her assignments done. I remember my dad saying, you know, I want to help you work on this. So my dad told her, I'm going to pick something that's hard for me to do, and I wonder how you would feel about working on your grades. My dad said he had a really hard time with eating too much sugar. How about you work on your grades, and I work on not eating too much sugar, and we'll be working together on our hard things. Every week we can have a check-in, and you can help me evaluate how I'm doing with my sugar, and I'll help you evaluate how you're doing with your grades. Every week when they checked in, my dad would share examples with my sister of how he had reduced his sugar intake and worked on his hard thing. He modeled what it looked like to work on something that was difficult, provided accountability for her grades, and at the same time build a connection that allowed a break in the deadlock with her grades, which eventually helped her to graduate. This example shows how we can work together with our children to find solutions to deadlock issues. As our kids get older, we discover that we have less and less control over their behavior. Focus on what you can control, not on what you can't. You can't choose your child's motivation, but you can control your reaction to a problem. For any parents who are feeling discouraged, the best thing I can say is to be patient and don't give up. There is something that is going to work for your child. Change is hard. Sometimes it will be difficult for both you and your child to stay engaged. 
But in the long run, your child will gain confidence as they see that any challenge can be overcome if you stick with it. You will find that partnering with your child can be a rewarding and beautiful experience for the entire family. With your help, your child can grow to become a more competent, responsible, and capable adult. Mm -hmm.